Huh. Galvin is another character that got a portrait. An elderly man hunches over a cluttered desk in the back of the workshop. His flesh is pulled tightly around thin, fragile-looking bones, except around his neck, where it hangs in loose waddles. He turns as you enter, a scowl already chiseled into his lined face. Back again? I told you. He hesitates, squinting at you from behind smudged and dusty spectacles. Of course, a fresh fool to replace the last fools. What brings you stomping through my workshop, eh? He draws his words out. Looking up and down, a sneer creeps across his face. Seems like you already know. Straight to business, no nonsense. We appreciate that, don't we? He turns to the bronze golem over his shoulder. Anything for a breather from your endless yammering. The Devil of Karok. Ah. Uh. Definitely reminds me of, uh, Automata. Uh, not, not, not Automata. Uh, Deus is a Ex Machina. There we go. The voice echoes from within the golem. You would miss me if I were gone, Aimura. For who would tolerate your barbs and insults? <laughs> but you come seeking the White Forge, like they all do. Boys with smooth cheeks and wild dreams. Girls with bright ribbons tied next to their scabbards. His voice rises and falls with the sing-song of mockery. Old men and women, too, seeking a final blaze of glory before they're snuffed out for another turn at the wheel. Sound familiar? His smile is rigid as he looks at you, and the corner of his eye twitches. You've said all this before, I take it. I have this conversation with every pig-headed swashbuckler those Postanagos and stalwarts send here. How does he... How many fucking constructs have you made, then? Because I had to clear all of them out to get here. Go see Garvino, they say. Surely he'll help you. Hmm, must have slipped their minds what a busy and important fellow you are. In the silence that follows, the temperature in the room seems to drop. Galvino glares at her. I should have let them stone you. Would have silenced your endless rattling forever. The hanging folds of skin behind his neck tremble. <laughs> then you'd have naught but those frostbitten inbreds for company. Guess this is what it'd be like if Aloth and Islmer were two separate people. Mr. Gavino, I would really appreciate your help, please. Of course you would. What would anyone here do without me? I... <laughs> he breaks off, suddenly looking startled. Gavino pauses long enough to take a deep breath. He folds his hands and bows his head. Sientere, it has been a long time since anyone addressed me so. <clears throat> he clears his throat before continuing. The villagers and their adventurers hammer and pry at the battery as if they were laying siege to some moldering lord's keep. He swats the air in front of his face. But those stones were laid by some of the finest builders ever to have lived. Disciples of Abidon in the truest sense. They will not fall by the whims of any kith. And the door itself, it is infused with living essence. He holds his hands before him and his eyes are wide with wonder. The dwarves themselves must have had a way of getting in. Perfetto! This is the crux of the matter. He claps his hands together. The Pargrunen of Durgan's battery perished within their own keep, victims of a violent disagreement among their own commandants. His mouth twists into a wicked grin. Surely in the village you have heard stories, no? Disappearing caravans, tracks in the snow, screams from the high towers. He pauses, watching your expression with a raconteur's glee, 
I don't know what that word means, except that I like some songs from the band that's called that. <laughs> the work of spirits still trapped in the battery, and they test them into those impenetrable walls. He raps on the mortared stone of his own house. But the door of the keep, the one the Pargrunen filled with essence, oh, it was made to listen, to recognize its masters. Like a password? So I need the door to recognize me. Traditional Optapo cultures revolved around language. Words revealed who they were and where they were from. That is why you need a Kandek. He holds up a twitching finger. Ah, yes. I believe those are anthems of sorts. Ah, that's the simple explanation. A Kantek is a statement of purpose. A declaration of identity. Each is unique to its stronghold. Ha! Seal your door with a key of words, and any liar can talk his way through. There's nothing built of words that won't break when the slightest stress is applied. Durance, they've been literally trying to get into it nonstop for, in a, for ages now. This is the dumbest time to be like, ha ha, how feeble and easy to get into. Thus, to enter a fortress like Durgan's battery, you would stand at the gate and recite its cantic. He spreads his arms, his face aglow. Very well. Where would I learn this Kantek? To learn the Kantek, you must speak with one of the dwarves of Durgan's battery. A shame they are all dead, no? He rubs his hands together, pacing. <laughs> Easy peasy. Totally not an obstacle for me. I'll just go talk to one of the dwar dwarves then. They're dead? No problem. But no doubt their souls live on in one or two of the villagers of Stalwart. Like fine wine poured into a cheap pot. Derision curls his lips. Right, I do need to find where the souls have gone. Like in Sagani's journeys. We have to do one of those, basically. To track down where their soul went. Because, uh, yeah, if their souls are on their... If any of their souls are lingering on their bodies, I can't get to their bodies because their bodies are inside of the, of the Jerkin's battery. But to identify them, that is the first problem. You would need the skills of an Anamancer. You're an Animancer. The golem's head turns in one slow, oil-smooth mo movement. Yeah, Galvino, why don't you go back to Stalwart? Oh, there's a sight I'd rust my giants to see. Enough! He snatches an ink pot from the desk and hurls it at the golem. It flies wide, spattering the wall with ink. Motionless, the golem watches him with her blank glass, uh, her black glass eyes. I shall speak no more of that damned village. Galvino's mouth and brows have calcified into a stern expression. I am a watcher. The golem swivels her head sharply towards you. Her mask of a face and the eyes, glass eyes behind it betray no emotion. But it seems as if she's watching you carefully. A watcher? Diverus? If this is true, then you could find a soul descendant from Durgan's battery, no question. But the greater difficulty remains. Elvino rubs his gaunt, whiskered cheeks. You would have to learn the Kantek from the dormant soul. And to do that, you would have to awaken it. But this awakening would be permanent, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. Whoever you awaken will live with the memories and the personality of a past life. Maybe peacefully, maybe not. His bony shoulders rise in a shrug. If I'm lucky, it'll be one of the leaders of Staltworth that is a descendant, because then they can make like a for the greater good kind of decision, because since they're the ones that want in in the first place. That is why you must pay attention to the soul you would awaken, no? It is a uh, monumental thing to impose on another, but these are the very people who wish to rediscover the White Forge, Verus. He removes his spectacles and polishes the dirty lenses from his tunic. So the Kantek's all I need. Who can say? None have yet opened Durgan's battery. Galvino raises his hands, palms up. 
But the ones that came before you, I think they got close. You may wish to find them and see what they discovered. I found what's left of them. A journal and a tile. Most interesting. He adjusts his spectacles as he peers at the tile. They spent many days at the battery door. This looks like something that once belonged there. He taps the tile. Awaken someone. How would I do that? An awakening is merely the jolting of a dormant soul into consciousness. He makes a bursting motion with his hands, splaying his fingers wide. When such things happen normally, it is because something has reminded the subject of a past life, often violently so. He smacks his workbench with surprising vigor. Thus, to awaken one of the former dwarves of Durgan's battery, you will need to address that soul, and preferably by name. He folds his hands together, steepling his fingers. But show some care. When you examine these souls, whatever it is you watchers do, you may see images, memories. He leans forward, his back hunched. These are moments of special import. What you see will tell you much about the person, and perhaps the condition in which they awaken. He raises his hoary eyebrows and tilts his head back. Awaken them from a traumatic memory, and who knows? Maybe they awaken thirsty for blood. Or maybe you awaken someone else. <laughs> he cackles again. Here. This has been tuned to the Eon of Durgan's battery. Use it near the villagers, and it should tell you if one has a soul old enough to have come from the battery. He rummages around and produces an unfamiliar device. Galvino's resonance amplifier. I see. Thank you for your help. He dismisses the thought with a wave of his hand. It is a pleasure to have such a courteous guest for a change. A shame you must dirty your boots in Stalwart. I'm going with him. The golem looks between you, her neck turning on its oiled joint. You? Go to Stalwart? Is this your macabre sense of humor, or has something gone to rust in that beautiful head I crafted? Galvino stares at her agape. No one will bother me while I'm with him. Besides, I can help him find people in Stalwart. The golem's burnished face is eerily impassive. You... you haven't been to Stalwart in thirteen years. And this watcher sees souls. What help could you be? Besides, I have need of you here. You owe whatever remains of your wicked life to me. A frown sours on his lips as he taps his chest with a crooked finger. The golem says nothing, but her essence smolders. Resentment rises from her in shimmering waves. She, swivel she swivels her head to look at you. What's the story between you two? <laughs> this charming specimen is a convicted murderer. <coughs> the devil of Carrick, she's called. Mighty fine of you to start with my good qualities, and you wonder why we don't get more visitors. Killed over a dozen people before they finally caught up to her in Stalwart. Perfect company for lonely camps and mountain passes, no? He nudges you, all the while grinning wickedly at the motionless golem. Hey, I know how to start a campfire. The only reason she's not a frozen corpse is because I convinced the old mayor to let me try an experiment. A shadow passes over his face. You put a person's soul into a metal body? He leans back, raising his hands. Into a work of art! Look at this! Craftsmanship worthy of a jeweler! I mean, yeah, you did it. It's the... We we're waiting for this to happen, somebody nailing this exact thing, and you managed to do it. You also gave her breasts so large I could see them from here. It's like the, one of the only things I can make out. Like, she has a head, she's got like a skirt, and just... Giant, shining chrome breasts that exist for some reason on a robot body. An excessive quality. Quantity. He traces the scroll work that runs along the golem's jaw. Fully articulated joints, capable of grasping a pen and writing her own name. But no facial expressions, which is kind of a bummer. But, I mean, 
given the standards we're working with, this is still like the only successful attempt by anyone I've seen for this kind of thing that it wasn't just a mindless zombie. He grabs her hand and delicately bends her tapered fingers. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of creepy Ex Machina vibes from this, which, come to think of it, would have been a movie that came out before this. Yeah, I guess so. And of crushing your throat. She snatches her hand away. Show me another smith anywhere in the Deerwood who is capable of such delicacy and precision. She is a masterpiece. Is it time for us to do the Turing test? <laughs> Galvino steps back and takes a longer look at her. Why did you build her? Why build a fortress or a village or anything to make something that keeps that... A disgusting sigh rattles in his throat. It was the early days of the legacy. My peers in the colleges of Anamancy were filling the Hollowborn with the souls of animals. He pauses, scratching his chin. I thought there was a better way. He's silent for several seconds, his gaze growing distant. One with a plum academy job back in Salona? Don't forget that part. He glares at her with narrowed eyes. Why is she called the Dero Devil of Karak? She committed her first crime in the village of Karak. Burned their family alive in their home. He shrugs. Did the same thing in half a dozen other villages, but their name stuck. I take it your experiment didn't go over so well with the rest of the village. Ah, uh, here we go. She rolls her eyes, rasping them again in their sockets. They were going to stone her anyway. Why not allow her to be put to some useful purpose? His lips curl back from yellowed teeth. I know I misread that. It says she rolls her eyes, rasping them against their sockets, which is just, I don't... None of those words are what I expect to have happening in, in series, but she is a weird robot. My life's ambition, to serve somebody's useful purpose. I approached Mayor Sinahiod and begged. He saw the potential and allowed me the privilege of attempting my little experiment. He sneers at the words and the indignity they recall. His shoulders are stooped and his teeth bared. Then... I accomplished what few Hanamancers have even dreamed of. No academic support, no patron. Just me in the middle of nowhere. He jabs a finger into his concave chest. Oh, now you got him all wound up. I transferred a fully intact soul from a living subject to a fabricated body. She retained her personalities, her memories, all of it. He claws at the air with one thick-veined hand. Yet the villagers saw only a stolen corpse. He throws up his hands. Aren't you afraid she'll murder you? She may be mad, but she's no fool. She wouldn't survive long on her own. If the villagers didn't send a hunting party after her, the elements would claim her. Her joints and mechanisms require maintenance, and she cannot perform all of it herself. See, he's reminding me. In case I get any bright ideas. That's all I wanted to know. She's a fine specimen. Her personality notwithstanding. He waves one hand in a circular motion. Golem says nothing, but her essence smolders. Resentment resides from her. Resentment rises from her in simmering waves. She swivels her head to look at you. Hmm. A chance to recruit a new party member, but one of dubious origins. Admittedly, Durance fucking sucks, too. Hmm. The question is, do I have a killer that's working for me, or is she gonna just go off and do some killings here and there? Like, outside of all the combat situations they're putting her in, or will she just be sated by the non-stop conflict? Because boy, do uh, the killings just kind of come my way, frankly. I'd like her to travel with me. Quay? No, 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 you don't know what you ask. He shakes his head 
waving his hands. This woman, the devil of Karik, she was a notorious murderer, burned people alive all over the region. Besides, she works for me. After all, I am the one who preserved her. He straightens his back and looks you up and down, taking your measure. I'll pay you. Listen, Aimiko. If you're set on traveling with her, I won't stop you. But let's make this a fair exchange, yes? Deal. <laughs> Fine price for a blacksmith striker. Suppose I should be flattered. And there you have it. A bargain. Uh, <laughs> there really is another companion in this one, in this expansion. What is she? She's a rogue. There's the rogue. I guess I know what gun to give her if I want to give her a gun. Then is if that is even an approach I want to give her. <sighs> That's the third character of this expansion that is most arguably some kind of melee character by my first glance. Uh, but I don't want I don't want to lose Maneha and Zawa because we're still in the expansion that they're from, so they're most likely to have content. But I don't I don't want to lose Edair because he's my best tank. But I don't want to lose Yaskier because he's my protagonist and I can't I just can't it's impossible. I don't want to lose Grieving Mother because they the mind controls are really effective, although less lately. And I don't want to lose Durance because they're the, the priest and give us Dr. You know, uh, fuck. I will wait in the place of your strength. A moment. You are going back to Stalwart, yes? Perhaps you could do me a favor. Elvino gives you a thoughtful frown. Tell me about this favor. There is a man in the village named Grinde, the head fisherman. The rest of Stalwart kisses his feet because he fills their stinking plates with speckleback. But I know he's not as virtuous as he seems. His face crinkles in vicious glee. So here's that fisherman where I was waiting to have them come up. Because the game was just like, yo, you met a fisherman. The end. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is this quest? Seems like you have a history with gr Grind. That self-righteous meddler engineered my eviction from the village. He turned them all against me. Now I want him to feel the scorn of those mush-brained imbeciles. What exactly do you want me to do to him? Humiliate him, of course. Show his neighbors what he truly is. And let him live with the disgrace. He points vaguely in the direction of the village, his thin arm trembling. He's always been a ripper sponge addict. Just got good at hiding it once his sainted sister died and left him in charge of the fishery. But he keeps a stash in the fishery, sneaks in at night when the others have gone home, and emerges sluggish and red-eyed a few hours later. I want you to expose him. Go to the fishery after dark when it's empty, find his ripple sponge, and show it to Renengild. I see. Uh, do not answer me now, but when you return to that festering eyesore and smell the stink of fish that hangs in the air, uh, consider what I've said. He grins. Your misgivings collect like grime on a doorstep, but think, if this green day is a fraud, does he not deserve to be exposed? But be sure to approach the fishery by night, when it's empty. They will give you no end of trouble if they see you stealing during the day. I had questions about the Devil of Karak. As must the gods themselves. No. Something else? Quay. I want to know more about the expeditioners who came to you before. As would I, but there is little to tell. They never gave their names. He tugs at his whiskers. But they seem to know more about the battery than the others, which is unusual because they did not seem like typical adventurers. He raises his snowy eyebrows. Their hands were smooth and marked with ink, not scars. 
and they traveled light. Unusually so. You're the Watcher, so you'd know better than anyone, Diverus. You must find a sole descendant of one of the dwarves of Durgan's battery. Talk to the villagers, look into their souls, whatever it is you do. When you find such a one, remind the sleeping soul of its old name. Awaken it thus, and it can teach you the Kantek. What were those constructs I encountered into your workshop? Other projects, they are none of your concern. He waves a hand and looks quickly away from you. The villagers don't trust you. Do those constructs have something to do with it? <laughs> he mutters furiously under his breath, raising his hands to the ceiling. For years I've been trying to create another like the Devil of Carrick. Yet those post enacos in Star Wars destroyed my machinery. His drooping skin trembles in his rage. Now... I can only create these broken, mindless things. The devil remains my most perfect creation. His lips twist with the taste of something bitter. Why do you need more golems? I can't present the devil of Carrick to the academies, can I? A mad woman and a murderer? No. I need to bring a success to the Republics. He rubs his hands together, frowning. Wait, where have you found the souls to create these other golems? Smugglers, slavers, fugitives. The kind of riffraff that passed this way. Rarely missed, and good work to keep my little devil busy. He shrugs. So she's the one who goes after them and, ca and catches them, apparently. Which is why she had the little, the annoyed note at the bottom of the other piece of, of documentation. So he needs new ones because the Devil of Karok is a is too of a, much of a bad person to present, but her all of her other go-tos are not positive examples of people either. I've heard enough. Or never mind. Why is there two options? Never mind? Something else? Quay. The other projects. Something else? Ah, uh, level 500 character. <laughs> Damn. That, uh, we're like halfway into another episode already, practically. I, uh, thought that was gonna be the conclusion of that episode, but it's gonna have to be the beginning of the next episode, because that was a very long conversation. Because I did not understand fully what I was getting myself into. We we're getting a whole brand new character, a ton of experience apparently, a bunch of things just got updated here. Still as stones. Pahulio farmers in the Exometal Plains discovered a large and elaborate ring of small Adra pillars in a secluded southern valley. Though presumed to be connected to the Anguithans in some way, the pillars do not appear to be connected to any ruins. However, since the site was discovered, farmers from up to 50 miles away have gone missing, eventually discovered days or weeks later in the ring of stones permanently petrified. As the Apahuilio have little experience with the Age of Pillars, they are calling upon Red Sarens, Deer Woodens, and Glenfathans for help. The trip to the Exometal Plains was largely uneventful, but Kana discovered a grisly sight upon arriving at the Apohulio Adra Circle. Over 50 locals had become permanently petrified among the stones. It took a few days of investigation, but, uh, but Kana learned that the abductions all happened at the same time of night, and in a pattern for miles around the stones. When, with the assistance of a Apahulo mathematician and philosopher, Kana was able to expose the killer. An extremely powerful Adragon, Adragon? Adragon? That had been protecting the Adra Circle for centuries. When Kith discovered the secret place, she began systematically stalking and petrifying anyone who lived within walking distance of the site. Whoa. Kana led a protracted battle against the creature with the help of the locals. Oopsie. Mossy Rock summons Swamp Lurker. Neat. Curious Rock can be used to summon a Swamp Lurker once. Oh. It's, it's a consumable. Bummer. Aw. Neat, but also a bummer. Because I want to have cool tricks. 
Hmm. So it goes. Oof. A whole new character. By the way, this whole time it's not lost on me that like... I, 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 it's, it's constantly amusing to me that we're calling it Durgan's Battery and it's just like, that's... That's my go-to joke name for dragons, is to call them Durgans. And one of the more extreme examples being uh, Nergigante from Monster Hunter being Nurgle Durgle. And it's just... Yeah. Have this entire expansion, I'm supposed to take seriously this amazing forge that's called Durgan. And I'm like, I, come on, man. You can't do this to me. You can't do this to me. Alright, let's read about rogues, because I don't necessarily know what to go for. I have one hint that I've been continually given, is just the idea that, like... They have, obviously they probably have an emphasis on stealth and maybe poison or something. But the one continuous hint is that the one rogue ability I keep seeing from other characters' perspectives is this thing where you can do bonus damage against vulnerable people. So that could be interesting. We'll have to see about that. But I don't know what else they might work as, as like a character. Ooh. At least one source seems to suggest... That I can stack these with each other. If she can be a long-range rogue, that would serve a few purposes. One, I'm low on long-range characters at the moment, so that'd be handy. But also, uh... It kind of compliments that she's probably a flimsy-ish character, being a rogue. So if she's vulnerable, then I probably want her to be... attackable. Devil of Karak's body cannot be unequipped. Okay. So she has 8 DR, minus 40% recovery. Wow. That's heavier armor than I would expect from a rogue character. <clears throat> Can I make it better? Okay, I'm just lacking the mats, but I'm allowed to. Am I close to superb yet? Let's see, what I need there is Adra's Dragon Scale. Oh, that sounds hard to get. Uh, but aren't we like a level 10 or 11? Like, I think we're getting close to that kind of tier. Let's see. I'd probably want to give you dexterity. Or something. Or perception. For accuracy. To increase your critting and stuff like that. Which I can afford to do, so that's good. Hmm. So at least you can enchant her armor. But you can't change it. Good to know. I was curious about that. I just saw that. I'm like, weird. Her body is an armor piece. Can that, does that mean you can switch it out? But I guess uh, that's not what we're talking about here. Hmm. Galvino's Resonance Amplifier. Use is 100 per encounter. Why does it even have a limit? 100. Let's see. 10.6 radius. Galvino created the strange device to detect souls that dwelled in Durgan's battery during a previous life. Sends out a pulse of energy generated by memories from soul fragments Galvino collected in the device's Adris shard. <clears throat> the individual's dormant lives resonate with the echo by momentarily pushing forward through their present life's sea of consciousness. The subjects are not aware of what is happening, but the disturbance can be perceived through special lenses or, luckily, the eyes of a watcher. Hmm. Interesting. Well, she's got a bunch of slots to put it in, so I'll put it there for now. Assuming that she can use it and my watcher can see it. I'll put that cape there for now, unless I have a better one. Hmm. Athletics and dexterity. <laughs> That's an appearance. <laughs> That's a look. Oh, those are paladin only. That's chanter only. These are all generic items. Max endurance is kind of bummer. Suppress, suppress affliction. How fast does it activate? Because five seconds of suppressed effects is kind of weak. I would say. We can't wear any armor on this character. Because she has built in. And I've potentially already found her the gun that she'll use. Fell stroke. As far as I can tell, it sounds like ambushing from fell stroke stacks with the rogue ability for punishing uh delibita uh delibitated delib what fuck it. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't get the word, it's fine. And you have the war club of Mataru. 
So he hobbles and weakens people, which probably primes them to get shot by her, which sounds like a good thing. So for them finding the same target, which would often be the case when I'm focus firing, would also stack with all of her other abilities. Speaking of which, let's figure out what she's going to be. Quick save. I guess I decide I've made a mistake. I always try to do that. I mean, obviously you're a stealth specialist. Backstab kind of seems like it's a mandatory thing. Dramatically increases damage done from stealth or invisibility. The rogue may be... Must, uh, the rogue may be... Uh, may use melee or ranged weapons, but must be within two meters of the target. Oh. That's less cool than I thought it was. But they have to be in stealth or invisibility. So it's only the first hit does 150% damage if you're within two meters, which is pretty fucking close. Even with a gun. Huh. But everyone else gets this talent where they do extra damage to people who are, uh... Are vulnerable. So that must be the- that must come in next or something? Like, I get this one first, then the other ones unlock? Maybe? Because normally you get a series of talents from these people. I can appreciate, by the way, that the uh, this person specializes in mechanics when you get them, which is probably why the entire place is completely drowning in traps. Rogue abilities. Crippling Strike. The rogue attacks his or her enemy's ability to move around efficiently. Effectively, that is the correct word. Uh, inflicting extra damage to and hobbling any enemy successfully hit twice per encounter. Hobble, full attack. Bonus damage. Hmm. Reckless Assault. Causes the rogue to dive into battle without a second thought, lowering his or her deflection, but increasing accuracy and weapon damage. Interesting. But it's melee only, which is kind of a bummer if we're going for ranged. Hmm. That doesn't mix well with what I'm going for. Escape. Allows the rogue to break engagement and expertly avoid the next attack, diving out of range to a specific location and granting a temporary defense bonus. So she jumps to a location 8 meters away while gaining a bunch of deflection and reflex. Which is, it's, 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 it could come in handy. Hmm. Dirty fighting. The rogue employs a variety of underhanded tactics, turning some of their hits into crits. Just in Wow, okay. So just straight up better. That's kind of a no-brainer. Here we go. Vicious fighting improves the rogue's skill with devious maneuvers, increasing the percentage of the rogue's hits that are converted into critical hits when using dirty fighting. So... Plus 10%. It's already 10%, so it'd be like 20% of hits become crits. That's pretty good. Shadowing Beyond. Allows the character to temporarily turn invisible. Enemies cannot detect invisible characters, and attacks made from invisibility automatically count as a sneak attack. Attacking, casting a spell, using a special ability, or using an item will end the state. Twice, ah, per rest. Bummer. But it's a good escape, at the very least. Another one on top of the other option if I have it. Vicious, I think vicious fighting is an obvious thing to grab first here. Crippling strike was an option before. Finishing blow. The rogue looks to finish off an injured opponent with a precise deadly strike that increases damage and the less endurance they have. Twice per rest. Ah, stop having per rest abilities. That means she can't just use it all the time and like once per fight or anything, which is just kind of a bummer because I go through so many fights. Those are good emergency abilities to have once time for a big boss fight, I suppose. But I don't like the endurance problem. Repost. The rogue looks for openings to counterattack in combat. Incoming melee attacks that target deflection and miss or graze have a chance of allowing an instant full attack repost. Only active with melee weapons equipped. Ah. Doesn't mix with the build that I'm currently going for, but it's definitely interesting. 
Hmm. I just don't know if I want another melee character in a, such a melee heavy party. Because all of- I have so many melee characters in general. Including my protagonist, which kind of stacks the deck. It's such a weird visual that she's so... Artificial, and then she has this just... Fleshy, gross thing on her head with all the teeth sticking down. The teeth are the weirdest element of that hat, by the way. I also wish that it would tell me the chance of making a repost happen, because it just says that you have a chance without saying what it is. But yeah, misses and grace can turn into counterattacks. This is a pretty cool ability for a rogue to, ha rogue to have. Deep wounds. Expertise in the art of pain leads all slash, pierce, and crush damage caused by the caused by the rogue to also do raw damage over time. Ah. So 3.4 additional raw damage per 3 seconds for 11 seconds. Huh. How does that math work out? 3 doesn't land on 11. Like, is there a final tick that's weaker or something that happens at the ninth second that's only two thirds as strong or something? Hmm. Three point four per three seconds. That's like, that's around like twelve or thirteen damage added on to every attack that she does. That's significant. Yeah. Seems like a no-brainer to me. Hello, way too much stealth. But she's gonna need that stealth if she's going to be able to uh, do those sneak attacks. I'm a little worried about them though, because then doesn't everyone just turn around and destroy her immediately? Shadowing Beyond allows the character to temporarily turn invisible. Right, this one. But I'm probably gonna want certain abilities from elsewhere in here, like... Be good at guns, the ability. Or something. Gunner. Increased reload speed. Seems like a straightforward thing to want if you're going to use guns. Is, hey, I would like my guns to also be good. How do I make good guns good? Oh, they don't take an eternity to use. Interesting idea. I like where this guy's head is at. We're level 7. Okay. Crippling strike. Do, do, do. Adapt evasion. The rogue becomes especially skillful at dodging attacks, converting many reflex hits to grazes. Ah. And then a graze can then turn into a counterattack if you have riposte, so those things all have synergy with each other. But I think reflex abilities are more about AoE. Yeah. I guess you can have AoE melee attacks, but I don't know if that's true. I don't, like, our Barbarian does explosive attacks, where all of their melee attacks have an AoE, but I don't know if those target Reflex. Oh yeah, and Riposte only works against Deflection, so it doesn't matter. But a lot- wow, most Grazes become misses, and half of hits become Grazes, but only for Reflex. So that's the big Achilles heel of that ability, is that that's a, that significantly reduces how many things it actually applies to. Coordinated positioning. In one quick move, the rogue instantly switches positions with one nearby target, canceling engagement if in effect. Automatic when targeting an ally, otherwise must hit versus an enemy's reflex. So you can also do it versus other people, like versus enemies. Persistent distraction. Whenever the rogue is contributing to the flank affliction on a target, the victim is also distracted. Old defenses go down by six. Number of en engagement targets by one. But flank is not described here. But I, I think you have to be doing melee in order to flank somebody, right? Hmm. I don't know if that's what I want to do. You can always Google it. Blanked. How does it work exactly? What a fantastic question. Ah, oh, it's on the Dead Fire forum. Never mind. Ah. Interesting description. Flanked has nothing to do with position. It is entirely based off the engagement status of the creature. Once a creature's engagement limit has been exceeded, the creature is considered flanked and the status is set. This is why spells like Cypher's Phantom Foes do not let 
do not just set status to flanked, but actually adjust the creature's engagement status by minus 10. So Phantom Foes does not do anything to get to flanked. It changes engagement. Sure. But now I have the additional question of Pillars of Eternity engagement. Oh my god, person got married. Ha 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 ha. No, it's just not what's going to happen here. <clears throat> I don't know if I, I don't think I'm going to get my answer right now. So let's move on. But I was just thinking like I don't I don't think a ranged like if it's based on engagement, okay. I don't think a ranged person can engage in combat, necessarily. Is my issue. And this is melee only. This is pretty good though. I might do adaptive evasion just because it helps you ev evade incoming spells, potentially, that are targeting your backline. <clears throat> Oftentimes the scary things that happen to... Um, uh, grieving mother and endurance lately are like big explosions that happen on the back line because of those ice blights. I might go for that. I do wish Crippling Strike told me ha what its conditions are for you being used. It doesn't say that it's melee or ranged, so I would assume you can just attack it to anything you're doing. I would hope. I don't know, let's do an adaptive evasion. I kinda wish I had not put a point into mechanics on top of what she already has, because uh, there's other people who can deal with mechanics. No, she kinda needs to be the one, actually. Intense pretty high already. Shadowing beyond. Hmm. This hobbles someone, which gives her an advantage against those kinds of people, I believe. Because if she hobbles somebody, I believe that she's just going to do more damage to them in general at that point. This is melee only, of course. Since she might be specializing in praying and critting and everything, something like a bloody shot could be really helpful. Hmm. Disengaging is obviously a thing for her, but if she goes into certain abilities, it'll be less of an issue for her. Whereas here's what she specializes in if she just wants to specialize with having a pistol, which is obviously... That's kind of necessary if she's going to be, like, all about big, major hits on enemies. She needs those kinds of hits to be working. Reckless Assault, we had that one before. Withering Strike. The rogue aims for a vital area, inflicting extra damage and weakening the target. <clears throat> Once per encounter. Weakened. Reduced, yep. 
No mention of melee, so I'd hope that it's not. Fearsome strike. <clears throat> the rogue attempts to greatly hinder an opponent by targeting areas crucially important to their ability to fight, doing, inflicting extra damage as well as weakening and hobbling. Extra damage weakened and hobble, but once per rest is very rare use, unfortunately. Hmm. At least Withering Strike is per encounter. Give her an ability to throw out there. Better not be melee. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to have to respec her, and that would be a bummer to go back and fix it. The air bypass, but slow. Doesn't say what distant means, does it? It's just like, I don't know, something about distant, whatever that means. Eh. Uh. I think Bloody Slaughter is just too in character for this class to not take. Oh, when we're done, I guess we'll find out how bad I fucked her up. Uh, I am just kind of making up on the fly how to spec entirely new classes that I just keep finding. And then I'm like, uh, yeah? And you, the higher you get, the more you kind of have to just like fake it till you make it. Because you're about to Im implement them into combat where you've never seen that. You don't really know how the class works that well. I'm curious about the bonus damage thing that I thought was going to happen, though. Where is it? No, those are the skills I bought. These are talents. So yeah, backstab, vicious fighting, gunner, okay. Adept evasion, yeah. Ambushing. Ability to approach unseen. Adding damage to their attacks when the target is blinded. Oh. So here's what I was looking for. It's just already on our character, which I forgot to check. I always got to check them when I get a new character. Check their abilities they have already before I start customizing them, because that's the context. And you can't see it from that screen. So here's ambushing, which does 25% bonus damage if they're blinded, flanked, hobbled, paralyzed, petrified, prone, stuck, stunned, or weakened. Which is many things. Some of which are things I just like to throw out there from other characters, but giving her abilities that cause hobble or weaken means that they'll then take 25% damage from her for as long as that effect is active. And if, if what I read was correct, it's going to stack so that both her gun and her both give 25%, which means it's either it's either 25% plus 25% like multiplicatively, whatever number that turns out to be, when you, when you, t when you do 125 times 125, uh, 1.25 times 1.25, uh, or if it'll be 150% if it's if it if they combine additively <clears throat> As well as any any target struck within two seconds of combat starting So any opening attack will do bonus damage even if I don't even do a backstab But if I do a backstab, I think that one attack I think backstab might stack with with uh, What's it called with ambushing and if that's the case then that's like a that's a lot because that is 150% melee damage. That might be 200% if it's added if it's additive percentages, which is a lot. Deep wounds, yeah. Pretty fighting. I remember these ones. Living machine. Ah, she's immune to poison, disease. Can't use food, drink, or drugs. Immune to sickened, unconscious, dominated, charmed, or confused. And she also has plus one might and plus one constitution. Damn. A backline character that's immune to most of negative effects is pretty good. It's just getting stuck or something. That, that's what she's vulnerable to, I believe. Oh, here's sneak attack. Oh, 
though it's even better than I thought it was. Yeah, they have the same description, like the exact same description. But ambushing, I believe, is coming from the weapon, and sneak attack is the actual rogue ability. So she does 50% increased damage in those in that situation, plus an additional 25% from the from the gun. And withering and sneak. To, to test this, we can remove the gun. Adaptive evasion, bleep wounds, blah, 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 sneak attacks here, ambushing is gone, yep. Ambushing is from the gun, the rogue ability is called sneak attack and is twice as strong. So she could be monstrously dangerous at the beginning of every fight, potentially just eliminating someone. So she could be very fun to use, or she could be a complete waste of time, who knows. Deflection. Yeah, you just kind of had boots for the sake of it, but she literally... She kind of needs that stuff. She's especially that kind of character. Do we have any kind of belts that seem especially her related? You're, we're both wearing troll hide. Hmm. Plus dexterity. Does she have a dexterity bonus yet? Yes, she does. So it's just trap accuracy. I'm. It's not really worth having a whole slot dedicated to traps. Okay. We'll see how she turns out. Enchant. So I can't give her more dexterity unless I want to uh, undo the... We can do perception, though. I believe that's not a conflict. Yep. Now she has a perception of 18 for plus 24 interrupt, four accuracy, uh, 8 accuracy, 16 reflex. So that's even more stacking accuracy. This thing has weak interrupt though, so it's not necessarily worth it specializing interrupt, although it does still make them restart whatever spell they're casting or stuff like that. That could be good. And this is fine, so it could be way better. Increased accuracy, sure. Or we can go for exceptional if I can get the right resources. Which would be nice. And I would like to reach superb if I can. Maybe leave it at fine for now. We can enchant it at least. And yeah. Bonus against Kith. If there's anyone I'm especially going out to assassinate, it's probably Kith. So getting a nice bonus on that specifically is probably nice. Really, everyone might as well maybe just have a, a Kith enchantment, considering how often that's the biggest threat is just an enemy adventuring party. Although eventually I might want everyone to have a dragon weapon. Because, yeah, dragons, spooky, sp spooky scary. Alright, well, hope she's a badass. That was a lot of customization. This has been an entire... I guess at this point this has been an entire episode of adding her to the party and then customizing her. It was a whole thing. That conversation that led to her joining the party was like a half an hour long. You can see why that why they decided to give that guy an, a portrait. And I don't think he's going to be a party member the way that she is. But how do I get to this door? And if I find something good, you can have half. Come well, on, you have all these perception and skills, and also you, you're you from here. How do I open this door? Maybe it's a, maybe this place is attached to Durgan's battery somehow. Which would be kind of hilarious, actually. Hmm. Yeah, right now my my goal is to go back to Durgan's battery. Guess we'll speed along. Hope these characters have some really good interactions. 
We now have three characters that are just from this expansion alone, so I'm hoping those characters have a lot of good interactions. Or at the very least, that they all have good interactions with Durance. <laughs> Who... I'm happy he feels like lore-wise or... In, or entertaining moments-wise to be like a mandatory party member, because... Mechanically, he feels like a mandatory party member as the, as the only kind of healer. So at least he's also this, like, very complicated, amusing character who... Man, I just actively dislike him, but at least he's entertaining. And also everyone else doesn't like him, and that kind of adds to the, the, the charm of the whole thing. Ah, oh, there's so much more zone. Alright. They want me to go back to town, but I'm not going to do that. Because I still need to actually finish exploring this map and find Durkin's battery in the first place. Steady does it. That just makes sense to me. It's Metzla. Those are a lot of spooky dooky mon enemy peoples. Addendum added bounty to Metzla. Hildor informed me there's a bounty on Metzla, leader of the Sisterhood of the Slaked Skull. A band of worshippers of Barath have been spotted in the wilds that surrounded Durgan's battery. I found Metzla at the base of the massive walls of Durgan's battery. Okay, there's not really a lot of extra context besides that they worship Barath. I'm right here. Alright, exiting fast mode. Whoa, there's a nice troll right here. Um. We're gonna go back down here real quick. <laughs> we don't want to hang out at that next to that because we don't want to aggro that the moment the fight starts. So let's just back up. All right. They're kind of fascinatingly not good at detecting my presence. Okay. All right here. Maintain formation. What do you start with here? Blinding strike. Full attack. Blinded, that's one of the things that, that makes her do extra damage to, and it's once per encounter. And then she has Withering Strike, which is the similar idea, but we can... Neither of them say anything about melee, right? So I think I can do both. So she has two different abilities that prime people for getting the bonus damage that she gets when fighting people like that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so that's good. How the fuck big is two meters, though? That's eight meters. Mm. How do I measure out distances in this game? I don't know. I'm right here. I don't really know how to determine that I'm within that kind of distance from somebody. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> All right, well, it's not how to, that's how to not to do this. All right, fuck it. I'll take, this is going to take some practice. <sighs> two meters. Well, you have to be within two meters of somebody while invisible. I'm not sure how reasonably I'm going to deal with that. Thankfully, her other ability is that her, uh, the first attack she does within two seconds of combat starting. <clears throat> gets like a 75% damage bonus. So at least she has an opening strike that's kind of a stealth attack, but how am I going to use backstab? Be within two meters of an enemy? That's Stealth is like undoable in this game, so I don't know how you ever be within two meters of an enemy in a way that doesn't lead to just dying. I'm right here. You're mine! Don't scream, you're stealthing with your flame gun. So how's this going to end for you? Grazes. <laughs> it's really... It's really strong first impression for this. Is it as a graze? Uh -huh. Stealth at sneak attack and ambushing, but, but graze. But hey, they'll take the deep wounds damage, there's that. Run away! Wow, she's fast. Or at least she has that going for her. Barely injured, that's what I want to see when I 
focus somebody that hard. They were barely injured. Right. Your AI is not turned on. <clears throat> Aggressive and cautious. First to attack targets that are already engaged by an ally. Yeah. Fighting somebody that's already being attacked is generally a good idea because it helps you focus things down, so that's a good one. Alright. Bad the injured. Let's help out with this. Uh-oh. Has Yaskier changed teams on us? Oh, he's confused. So he's just going to do weird stuff every turn, but only for four more seconds. Ah. And Edder is also confused? Wow. And Durance is also... Okay, half of our team is confused. I just realized. <coughs> That's not helpful. Really not helpful. Huh. Let's go over here. <laughs> Stop. I see you over there. Blind the shit out of this guy that's chasing you. Yeah, they're just kind of wandering in random directions right now. Alright. You're dazed. Make sure you have fist mode turned on. You're already, you're already doing that? Cool. Alright. Well, he's deep wounded, and blind didn't work out. So much for that. Yeah, but misses with additional effect. The blind was the whole point of the effect. That's why we did it. <laughs> ah! Yes, Gear, we could use a distraction over here. There we go. He didn't like that. Alright, you can go ahead and change back to that target. And she will help you. Ouch, by the way. Durance, don't run into the mid- Oh, confused characters. You're just gonna run to the middle of the crowd. <laughs> Why would you do this to me? This isn't the correct answer at all. Wow, that's a lot of AoE going on there. Not AoE, that's a lot of duplications, I mean to say. Just all around you. Get him. And Durance is running out of <laughs> endurance. As one would expect at this point. If you could just politely withdraw yourself, which you can't, because you're Frank, you're also on the ground, so you're not gonna get to do anything by and large. Metzler's still not down, huh? I can try to send this guy flying. What's the chance of hitting? 59%. I'll have to take it. Just get off of my dude. These guys are all standing in a circle around a corpse. I love that part of how that works. It's so silly. You target the priestess at her now that you're finally coming back to your senses. Knock her on her ass. Alright. Dawa, when you do that, I really want you to knock people back. That's like the whole reason. This whole miss with additional effect thing's a real bummer for me. There we go. Everybody kill that guy. There, leader's down. Now everyone focus fire that guy. Actually, they're killing they're killing Durance. <laughs> this guy just kinda came in. I don't know I don't he was way off in the middle of nowhere, so he kinda surprised me. There we go. Yeah, this group is collectively a snowball of death. I guess you I guess. To some extent, we just don't really need... Like, it's kind of a mistake on my own brain that I think of Durance as being more mandatory than he probably is, in that right. I think of him as this big, like, healer, even though I, I actually don't even cast the heals he has very often, because they run out relatively quickly. 
But he does do buffs. Giving everyone like a healthy amount of DR and stuff like that. So he serves some kind of purpose. But I might get more value by just having another damager. But I also want to gradually get through his giant nightmarishly long story. So there's that going on. Fine, 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 fine. Not even fine. Not even fine. And Ripple Sponge. Good old drugs. Made from the sponges found along the rocky coasts of Rawatai, Ripple Sponge is ground finely and inhaled. It is often used on long sea voyages for it has a soothing, calming effect, which helps in tackling extended periods of strenuous activity. The remaining items are kind of whatever. And they have Sveph. Just, 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 if we, we just won, if we were if we had a bingo card for this, like, they had all the versions. They had every drug. Congratulations. In the trampled, bloody slush around this toppled wagon, you spy tracks leading back south along the path. Scary, scary troll. This crate, is this crate is empty, though it smells strongly of fish. Nice and slow. Troll. Troll. Oh, many troll. Too much troll. There we go. Hey, Delo Karak got, got a crit and an interrupt in one roll, along with the deep wounds. Sneak attack and ambushing. Yeah, so just clicking right at the beginning of the combat, just letting her attack like everyone else does, is fast enough to trigger sneak attack and ambushing then. And then if we're lucky, they'll be inflicted with enough negative effects over the course of the fight that we can keep the bonus damage rolling. Speaking of which... We're doing all right. Oh. That had to be like a nine and a 10 or some other thing, but I, I swear, it looked like the word, it looked like the, like the number 910 came up. I'm like, that can't, no one can take that much damage. There, if I was doing that kind of shit, that dragon would have been dead. Like the numbers just don't separate very well when there's just a cloud of damage on somebody. So you just kind of have to take it for the word for it. The battery watchtower. The heck is that? Hmm. Oh. That looks wildly dangerous, but it also looks like the game's suggesting you could make it like a jump for it. Just use your athletics to bypass Durgan's battery. And all of its, uh, limitations. Talisman of the Unconquerable. Plus two intellect while endurance is above 50%. 25% focus gain while endurance is above 50%. Fuck. Hey, Grieving mother who just left the party. Uh, got a cool item for you. Jesus. Both, both bonus intellect and focus gain. I'd be tempted to give it to a different character otherwise, because of the intellect. But bonus focus gain whenever you have he whenever you're healthy could be just a lot of focus gain for someone. <clears throat> so is there even an interior to this place, or just skip straight upstairs? I skip straight upstairs. As you grab the bow, it vibrates with a strange and familiar energy. Searching your pack, you find the silver arrow that you found lodged in an injured winter wolf. As you hold the bow and arrow together, the arrow suddenly snaps into place. You hear a crackling hum, and a pale ribbon of light begins to form between the ends of the bow. When you pull the arrow back, you feel very solid resistance. Stormcaller. 
that came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting that arrow to come up again. Oh, it's even a, a bound item that levels up. <clears throat> Chanter, Cypher, and Ranger. Ooh, I wonder if it's good enough to give to Weeping Mother, like to offset the benefits of having a shotgun, because this is this is one that scales over time. Because our Ranger already has one and our Chanter already has. Do you? You don't. I want you to have this other one. It's not good for you. But if I wanted you to use a bow like this, I'd have to change your build. But also, you're currently built around doing an AoE attack around everybody around you. So, that'd be kind of a bummer if, uh... If, uh... That'd be kind of a bummer if, uh... I switched to this and couldn't do that anymore. But maybe... I don't know. I feel like ambushing is so strong that I wouldn't want to switch this out for something else, as tempting as it is to use an item, a skill like this. It does shock pierce damage, that's why it's called stone collar. Minus 60R against shock, making start the shock even stronger. It starts out as exceptional before it even starts unlocking stuff. This bow is as smooth and as light as driftwood, yet hard as a sturdy mast. It feels warm in your hands, as if one of its previous owners had just passed it to you. As you hold it, you can almost see it. You can almost feel the sea spray on your cheeks and hear the storm-whipped waves in your ears. Hmm. We just can't seem to stop finding cool shit everywhere. Yeah. I'm sure this is wildly dangerous over here. Oh, you can't click on it. You have to already be there. Huh. Once you're already in the ba Durgren's battery, you can inspect that, I guess. I was thinking maybe it was like a super high-risk jump to go for. That's like, oh, you can just skip the whole password thing and just sneak in this way. But maybe it's like great risk to one of your characters. Maybe even a death. I have no idea if any of these things can actually kill your characters, but it's a fear. Certainly a thing that comes to mind. Who do you think put a ban on Brithwin in this area? A very dumb joke. Huh? Hi. I take it this may be the entrance to Durgan's battery. Yeah. That caravan must have had a half ton of steel. Coinmaster Zoltan's finally getting his way. For now, the other commandants will have his head. Only if they don't tear each other to pieces first. I heard Maroon and Exandru. Shh. Last thing I want is to get on Maroon's bad side. Fine, just say the words then. I'm getting hoarse. Of course. <laughs> of course our visions end the moment the most important information is about to be revealed. Yep. The dwarves sealed the door, never to emerge again. If there are answers, they lie within. That's why I was surprised to find that you have to like... I was surprised to hear that you need to, uh... How did I put this? They have to awaken somebody and permanently change them. I'm like, surely, with all the random visions we always see, we could just find the vision that happens to feature the password without permanently damaging someone, but I guess that's just not in the cards. <laughs> <laughs> 